Okay, let's get into pair credit. That's the next sure. product I want to touch on. And you guys launched this in Logano as well. And I just want to read off the pair credits Twitter page, just your bio there. It says, pair credit is an open, transparent, peer-to-peer -peer accounting system that uses lightning style channels to bring a credit system to life. So first, can we break down that sentence? I really want to learn more about specifically how the accounting system works, why lightning style channels rather than lightning channels, and then what kind of credit system you're imagining here. Sure. So uh, for people that follow me, they know I've been talking about you know credit or tokens on Lightning at least for a long time. Um, I, I was a, I'm not a pioneer because I wasn't the one that doing any of the actual pioneering as far as technology goes, but I was an instigator in, in this whole realm and reviving it within the Bitcoin world because at BitRefill, I was very interested in this idea of having instant tokens. And, you know, taking what's cool about Lightning and seeing if we can make that cool about tokens. And more specifically, not for ICOs or alternative monies or weird network inherent tokens or whatever, but because of credit. Um, you know, uh, there's a lot of people going back all the way to 2013, you know, requoting the the gold is money, everything else is credit from JP Morgan into Bitcoin is money, everything else is credit. But they always used it in the negative, as in like Bitcoin is the only thing we should care about and everything else is a scam. But credit is not a scam. Um, trust is useful. Trust will probably always be useful. And I'm more interested in digitizing trust and trying to give people better tools for choosing who to trust and what to trust them with um, than I am in pretending that trust is evil. Um, cooperate, trust is cooperation. You know, lack of trust is, is competition. You need a, a healthy balance of both. Um, and simply, you can never com one person can never compete with multiple people cooperating. And so trust is always going to be useful. Um, and so that's the kind of primitives of why I care about trust and why I care about credit. And I would like to see credit extended to things like gift cards. In other words, not just for representing dollars like Tether, but representing credit from the institutions and, and things you actually rely on in your day-to-day -day life. So rather than trusting a bank with your dollars, trusting you know your grocery store to have some liability to you for groceries because you prepaid, you know something like this. Like I'd rather I'd rather use my grocery store as my bank for for my grocery expenses. You know what I mean? Um, and so having the idea of gift cards or gift tokens, having the idea of product tokens, you know, a, denom the, a thing denominated in a product or denominated in a service instead of denominated in a money. Um, these are interesting to me because I think you can create nice aftermarkets if these are bearer instruments. And if you can have a digital aftermarket of all the things, you can have a highly, you know, automatic market and you can really have everything competing and you can have supply and demand really expressing in like an ideal free market. This is where you know, the roots and, and underlying interest for me in all this technology. And so I put a lot of research in and, and supported a lot of miscellaneous projects on the way, you know, from RG, from RGB trying to do tokens on Bitcoin using um, single use seals and, and, and trying to get RGB working on Lightning to trying to revive Omni, which is the original place that Tether was born and what made tokens popular really, um, at least in the modern sense. Uh, and, and Omni Bolt, which was a way to make channels, Lightning channels out of Omni transactions. We fully implemented that, at least in the state that it was in uh, last March or so. Um, and we dropped that too. Um, and in, in also being part of, you know, giving feedback on Taro when it was called CMYK before it was released and, you know, giving feedback and, and, and think and considering that as an option. But by last March or April, I forget what it was, but, uh, you know, looking at the whole environment, I started to become very uncomfortable um, with, you know, the idea that like, well, if we're going to support Omnibolt and now Taro is going to say that Omnibolt is a bad is bad because it's like Bitcoin blow and they're going to have a whole narrative war with with Omnibolt. This means that like bootstrapping is going to be a real challenge because Bitcoiners like cheering the current incumbent winner. They don't like cheering 
a risk. They like, they like they're tribal. They, and so I know what's going to happen is people will go to exchanges and they'll say, well, we were thinking about getting rid of Omni. We don't want to depend on it more and now add another Omni bolt on top of it. And then wallets will say the same thing. Like, why do I, I don't want to add all this. I'm having trouble enough adding lightning and you want me to add another lightning and then they're going to say, oh, we'll just wait for Taro. Like Lightning Labs is the, is the real deal. They're the thing. And, and then it's just going to be this whole narrative war and bootstrapping problem and stagnation. And then looking at Taro, I was like, well, fuck. Like, I actually think the Omnibolt design kind of makes more sense in some ways. And so are we going to support both? What's the complexity of a user experience where you, su- where you support multiple to- token networks in your app? What is the, and then I was thinking about the trade offs for all these things like liquid. It's really difficult to convey to the user that the, the, the risks and, and trade offs and trust related to a federation. With Taro, it's like now you have the inefficiencies of having to exchange you know, your, your value in order to be able to transmit it over lightning. So now you have the complexity of lightning plus the complexity of exchanging, you know, plus any cost and, and related to that. So it's definitely going to be more expensive to use that. And you have the limitation with Tara where if you do rely on that design, that you're only going to have tokens that have a, already have an established order book. Because if you have to exchange your token, there has to be liquidity for your token. So there's no way to bootstrap tokens with the at least the initial Taro design. They I think they say they're going to be able to do you know, you know, token native channels and not conversion you know, not rely on the edge nodes, but I don't know. I, I don't know where that is in their priorities or, or what their plans are. Um, so there's just a lot of trade-offs in all these decisions and I didn't like any of them and I didn't want to support all of them. And so I was having a conversation with Paulo about like what my actual requirements were, what I was actually trying to accomplish and why I cared about this kind of like I've just explained to you, but on a little bit more technical level. And I basically told him, you know, all I really care about is that, I can have my tokens as a bearer instrument where I can trade them peer to peer with other peers and not have to ask a centralized entity for permission. And so actually, so so what Bitcoin and blockchains bring to the table for tokens is making them into bearer instruments and making it so the issuer, while the issuer can censor to some degree, in other words, they can go and they can delete your balance and they can, you know, uh, blacklist you from redemption from certain balances, this kind of thing. That's not a problem that blockchain solved. It's not a problem. So thus, it's not an assumption that that problem can or should be solved. You know, the issuer is always, is always at least one trusted entity in a credit situation. It's the issuer, right? Um, And so that's an assumption. It's a given. You have to just say that's the way it is. And I want to make it so that's the only person I have to trust. And that's what blockchain brings to the table. But the problem is blockchain brings all these other trade-offs. It doesn't scale. It's expensive. At scale, in other words, at saturation, these use cases might not become viable anymore. Like tokens on Bitcoin might not make sense if Bitcoin blocks are full all the time. But it might not work at scale. Just like how Lightning has these kind of risks. If, if, the, block, if the blocks are full all the time, now you run risks about closing your channel and your enforcement transaction, your ju- you know, justice transactions, is weird attacks and stuff. And so I'm worried about putting things on top of blockchains because they might break and they're expensive and they're complicated. And so I said, I'm starting to wonder if we could just do this with you know, Hypercore and you know, Hyperswarm in, in the stack we already have. And he, what he said was he had actually played with some designs for doing credit a credit system in the past and that him and Matias from pair, I mean, from hole punch had some ideas about this, you know, one or two years prior and that he thinks what I'm describing could be done. And so from there it was just, you know, it turned into, you know, we had like a two or three hour conversation and it about requirements and about whether this could be done. And once we established that it could be done, it immediately started becoming, you know, a project. And so, you know, the next day he's saying, okay, the, you know, whole punch is working on this. Um, we got, we're going to have a proof of concept in some months and, uh, yeah, we think it could be done. It's pretty sure. And so I dropped, I dropped all worrying about Taro. I, we totally gutted out. We had the implementation of Omnibolt we had in BitKit at the time, um, and removed all the token stuff. And that's why BitKit was released without any kind of token tech in it, because we are confident now at this point 
you know, say nine months later since been working on uh, pair credit, um, that uh, this is the way to properly do tokens. And so as far as what pair credit is, that's the history of it and why we're doing it um, and how it came to be and, uh, and that kind of stuff. As far as what it is, it's basically a way to have a fractal ledger system. And so the issuer can create a ledger that you know people can have accounts with, much like how you can make an account with Tether directly and you can deposit cash with them. Um, and each issuer can have whatever requirements they want for having a direct account with them. But anyone that has a balance in any of these accounts can lock their balance and create their own ledger out of using their balance. And so this kind of fractal nature allows things like, for example, say um, Binance has an account with Tether. And now the, because they want their users to be able to use Tether um, using pair credit. And now a Binance user has, you know, an, uh, uh, an account or an address with Binance. And thus they have their, their Tether is coming through Binance. But this is all, you know, provable. In other words, it's all rooted to the core. It's all cryptographically provable who owns what. Um, and now those users can lock their balances on Binance and they can say, and so, and they can make their own ledger and say, now I'm a user at Binance and I lock my balance um, and I want to send you pair credit. So now we have two options. You can either have an account in my ledger and I can allocate, you know, some amount of tether to you based off of whatever process we want. Um, I can sell it to you. I can give it to you, whatever. Or let's say you're already in a, another area of the ledger. Let's say uh, Bitfinex has an account with Tether and you have a Bitfinex account. And then your mom has a, a ledger, you know, and then you're in your mom's ledger. So you're somewhere else in this whole root system. Um, I can... Now I have two options. I can route a transaction through the route up the up the center through Tether back down to you. But this is not very practical and it's very sensible. And it's essentially the equivalent of asking Tether for permission, right? Because if they don't like that I'm paying you, they can stop you. But instead, what we do is we can actually open a lightning channel across ledgers. And so I take my balance in you know, my ledger or in Binance's ledger, and I open a channel to you in some other ledger. And we can now create an off, off database state. So instead of off chain, it's off ledger. You know what I mean? And the lightning channel, it's not a Bitcoin lightning channel. It has nothing to do with Bitcoin. It just works the same way that lightning channels work for Bitcoin. So in other words, there is a state we do update the state by mutually signing updated states with transactions. And either of us can close that by presenting a state to the ledger. Now, and you also have the punishment mechanism. If you submit an old state and I prove a newer state, you can be punished however the issuer you know, of that ledger prefers. So we're basically doing lightning for ledgers or lightning for data instead of lightning for Bitcoin. And so you just think of the primitive, instead of being the Bitcoin blockchain, the actual blockchain is, quote unquote, is um, it's an append-only log uh, hypercore ledger.